Hmm. Have you come to a decision, Prime Minister? It seems there's nothing else for it. Jolly good, we're back in the present. Victor! Are you in wait? We should go too. At this hour, Victor should be in the stadium. Alright, so we'll do that straight away. We will head to the stadium. Please tell me we've finally got football loving Victor back in the field. Vladimir Blade is gone. We can't play with him ever again. Victor! He's not here, what? Why are you running around like headless turkeys? Victor! Maybe you just have turkey brains. Oh, I'm just so glad you're here. Of course I'm here, why wouldn't I be? Um, yeah, good point, never mind. There we go, now we can use Doom Sword Slash and Doom Dive Drive on the intended Blade Brother. How's Vladimir doing? Volodya? He's getting better bit by bit. They say his rehabilitation treatment's going well. I'm glad to hear that. Well, this is good news, and one less thing to worry about. Everyone, listen up! Something's wrong! What's the matter, Mr. Firewill? The government! They pushed the Football Prohibition Act through Parliament today! Football Prohibition Act? That's right! Playing football has been banned! It's completely illegal! What? I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid Ryman Football Club will have to be disbanded, effective immediately! Disbanded? Just when we got everything back to normal, why? A football ban. Exemplary work from Protocol Omega 2.0. Truly wonderful. Well done, Beta. You really are much more capable than Alpha. Thank you very much. We're expecting big things from you. We look forward to seeing further successes. <laughs> Understood, sir. Football Prohibition Act? What could have been so bad to make football illegal? Could be because of that international match Japan played. If that's the case, then there's nothing we can do. Hmm. Miss Hills, what are you talking about? Last month's Japan versus USA friendly. Oh yes, I remember. I watched it on TV when I was in Okinawa. It was really exciting. Why it was genial and so inspiring? Inspiring? You must be talking about some other match. Uh, yeah. It was only a friendly, but the Japan team was so violent, they had to call off the whole thing. So it got cancelled? Many of the American players were seriously injured. It was a disgrace to Japanese football. What? That's possible. No, I didn't want to believe it either, but because of that match, Football has gained a reputation as a dangerous sport. So the passing of this Football Prohibition Act is all down to that one match. I think we've got a hunch who's behind this. El Dorado, I'd bet my paws on it. Those scoundrels must have intervened in the Japan vs USA match. We really must keep a close eye on them. A uh, teddy bear? Ahem. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Clark Von Wunderbar, but you may address me as Wonderbot. I think you'll need to go into a bit more detail, Wonderbot. They look a little confused. Why, of course. Allow me to explain. And that, as they say, is that. No need to be afraid, for I, Clark Von Wunderbar, am at your service. So you and Faye are from the future? That's right. We're here to put to right the changes that have been made to the past. I remember you. You came and helped me out when I was a Ryman student. If you hadn't come back to protect football then, Ryman Football Club wouldn't even be around today. I can hardly believe all this. So what we must do now is set everything straight. 
That match last month that you mentioned. What was the final score? Japan won 3-2. That's not right. It was already 10-0 by the time the second half started, before the match was cancelled due to Japan's violent play. Poor sportsmanship indeed. Team, it seems we've got another score to settle, as it were. I think I had it wrong. Maybe I'm the one with the turkey brains. I'm not getting any of this at all. I should have the match recorded. Let's give it another look. And we also got everyone back for the purpose of watching a VHS tape. Well, that's that seems of a high priority. Let's watch this video in the meeting room. I'll have a quick check of the iNata just to see exactly what's going on. We get more catch-up from when Gammon got took away from Marina in the previous episode, and that's actually it, so we'll just head straight in here and see. Well, Mark and Celia are talking over here. The, uh, I know, I haven't actually got rid of all the notifications yet. Ah, the, the young coach Evans has more to say. Now that Mark has actually addressed the fact he remembers being visited in the past by Faye and Arian, which kind of breaks the timeline even more. But as the game says, don't worry about it. Okay, this is the video of the International Friendly. I wonder how different it is to the one we saw. Simply unbelievable! Another red card for a Japan player! Ugh. You, red card, off the pitch now! <laughs> what are we seeing here? The Japanese players are completely ignoring the ref and continuing to play. This is shocking behaviour. That's the match, all right. What a shocker, eh? Them players made us all look like riot badons. But this is not what I saw. That's Protocol Omega. They must have swapped themselves with the Japanese team to interfere with the game. So this game is actually an interrupt in the timeline. And if an interrupt changes history, our destinies change with it, don't they? So transient, so fleeting. Well, I'm glad someone gets it. But why is it that we have a different memory of this match to everyone else? <laughs> sure, he he can explain that if he wants. He's, he's very much the Back to the Future, isn't he? He's somewhat based upon the famous scientist from uh, from that film series, whose name eludes me at the moment, which is kind of embarrassing. But uh, yeah, you, Eugene, you don't want to see a young coat sharp. He looks exactly the same. Oh, are you calling me old? Yes, we finally get Mark himself involved. I mean, he spoke earlier in the same 
topic, but let's learn about the multiple worlds theory, eh? It's a genuine theory. You're actually going to learn something in this episode of Inazuma 11 Go Chrono Stones, which is applicable outside of the Inazuma 11 context. Enjoy. Listen carefully, kids. The multiple time theory is no piece of cake, you know? When history has changed, a new time stream branches off alongside the existing stream. We call this stream a parallel world. The parallel world comes into being every time something changes. So at any one time, there can be multiple parallel streams in full flow. So this is like when Vladimir came from a parallel world to help us, but the Vladimir who played alongside us has gone. When did Volodya ever play alongside you? That's too complicated to explain right now. Now you've got it! The Vladimir who grew up as a footballer existed within a parallel world, but well, that parallel world has now ceased to exist. Changes to history are like a plucked guitar string. For a moment, the string follows many paths, but soon settles down into one path. The new path gradually replaces all the other paths that could be, so when Arian and his friends time jumps, they escaped out of the time stream just in time to avoid the rewriting of history that affected those who remained. For example, you still recall the real match from one month ago. So if we don't do something, the Football Prohibition Act will be permanent? Oh no! Precisely! You've cracked it! You are a clever girl! Hmm, I see. But that's dreadful. You mean that if we don't do something, then our futures will just disappear? Hmm... This is too difficult for me to get my head around. Just tell us what we got to do. Simple! Before the changes in the timeline become fixed, you need to jump back to the interrupt and stop El Dorado from interfering. You mean we have to gun back to before the start of the Japan vs USA match like? Yup, we need to take the place of the American team and battle Protocol Omega. What? But that's absurd. I'm in. I'll go and get football back. I refuse to live in a world without football. It would be kind of unbearable. Stimmt, we have to help. Our destinies are on the line. How could I not fight? Okay, then let's reach for the stars, team. Gather round. The glorious Clark Von Wunderbar shall lead you to victory. Um, Coach Evans, we need you. I'll hear you, Arian, and I'll be with you every step of the way. But, but... Sorry, Wunderbutt, but Coach Evans is Raymond's coach. Uh... Faye, we'll need you on the team, too. Sure. It's wonderful to see you all so excited about taking on El Dorado, but have you acquired an artifact for the time jump yet? We'll need something that has a connection to that interrupt. A football or a team shirt, perhaps. Hmm. Ah, oh, now that you mention it. What about this? It's the ticket stub from the match. Oh, cheers, Sam. Nice of you to hold on to that, like. Yes, this will work fine, right, Doctor? Huh? He's gone. Dr. Cryptix is a very busy man. Are you sure that's where he went? Yes, of course I'm sure. Come on, let's not dilly-dally. There's a match waiting for us one month ago. To the TM bus! And we will take that on in the next episode for our fourth match against Protocol Omega. But this time, the lineup seems to be different. And we also kind of have to take the place of an American national team. Not sure how we're going to justify <laughs> walking up to the sun saying, uh, Hey, yeah, we're American. Just ignore our Japanese accents and then it'll be fine. But as long as Victor finds his lost towel, then that will be fine. See you in the next episode for more footballing action. TTFN.